Who hasn't dreamed at least once in their life of visiting worlds that are radically different from our own? To see with your own eyes dead oceans with diamond hummocks, to swim in smoky methane lakes, to plunge into poisonous clouds hiding waterless landscapes. And of course, to do all this safely for your own life. <laughs> Hubble, subscribe, subscribe. There are fewer and fewer unexplored locations left on planet Earth. What should humanity do with its insatiable thirst for knowledge? Of course, turn its gaze to the heavens. To look beyond our own planet, telescopes and spyglasses are no longer enough for us. At the moment, the most relevant way to study the solar system and even space beyond it is with automatic interplanetary stations. Since such a voyage is expensive, we need to choose the target without error. But what if each of our neighboring planets is interesting and remarkable in its own way? It's not an easy task, but in the summer of 2016, the next target was finally determined. It's the giant Jupiter, the most mysterious planet in the solar system. Why Jupiter specifically? Despite its impressive size and striking appearance, we know almost nothing about the planet's magnetic field, its internal structure, or its closest moons, such as Io, Ganymede, and Europa. Which spacecraft is responsible for finding all this out? National Aeronautics and Space Administration decided to send the Juno spacecraft to Jupiter. This is the second probe in this location after the famous Galileo, which stayed near the gas giant for a whole eight years. Juno is meant to clarify the data already obtained and significantly expand on it, so the probe's mission is very important. Do Jupiter's bright clouds contain water and ammonia? Does the planet have a solid core? How do the tornadoes at the North and South Poles differ? And finally, is it possible to create a map of Jupiter's hurricanes? The Juno spacecraft will definitely answer these and other questions. It might even manage to discover new objects on the surfaces of Jupiter's moons. By the way, according to mythology, the spacecraft was named with the subtle humor typical of scientists. Juno is the wife of Jupiter, that is, Zeus, in the myths. According to legend, only she was able to look through the thick clouds and see the tricks of her cunning husband. Truly, as you name your yacht, so shall it sail. So what exactly did AMS Juno see in Jupiter's restless clouds, and what new things did it discover on its moons? Remarkably, the probe was equipped with solar panels and figurines for its flight. Lego, yes, you heard that right. Actually, they are made of aluminum to withstand the extremes of space, and they represent the silhouettes of the god Jupiter, his wife Juno, and Galileo Galilei himself, who once discovered the four largest moons of the giant planet. But why solar panels instead of radioisotope thermoelectric generators? The thing is, these are innovative photovoltaic cells that can be successfully used even at a distance of about five astronomical units from the sun. However, when the spacecraft passes through the shadow, it will use a backup power source, lithium ion batteries. What equipment was the probe fitted with to thoroughly study Jupiter and its moons? First of all, there is a magnetometer, which is attached to one of the solar panels. The device is designed to monitor the planet's magnetosphere. Juno is also equipped with a spectrometer for studying auroras, the only three-color video camera, and a microwave radiometer. After all, everyone knows that Jupiter mercilessly spreads radiation for many miles around. With such equipment, not a single secret of our giant and its moons will be hidden from Juno. And indeed, the probe managed to surprise scientists. What the observers saw has no analogs. This is a real New Year's gift since the amazing spectacle was recorded on the eve of the holiday on December 27, 2024. What is this about? It's about an incredible volcanic eruption on Jupiter's moon, Io. This event is of an unprecedented scale. Even if the Yellowstone caldera were to erupt, the results would be less impressive. 
The eruption area on Io was about 100,000 square kilometers. That's three times larger than the area of Lake Baikal and comparable in size to a small sea. Io said goodbye to Juno in such a spectacular way since this was the spacecraft's last flyby of the moon. Scientists classified this event as the most powerful volcanic activity ever recorded in the solar system. Scott Bolton, the head of the mission, announced this at a press conference. No wonder, since the power output of the active area of the erupting volcano exceeded 80 trillion watts. Scientists suggest that several volcanoes with a shared system of magma chambers became active at the same time. That's why the parameters are so impressive. Even for Io, whose interior is constantly erupting, this event is truly extraordinary. We were lucky that, thanks to Juno, we were able to see at least the aftermath of the catastrophe firsthand. Is that really all the spacecraft saw on Io during its time in close proximity to Jupiter? Of course not. It discovered new previously unregistered objects on the surface of the restless moon. They are located not far from the line of demarcation, the so-called Terminator, the boundary between the illuminated side of the celestial body and the side covered in darkness. In this photo, the three discovered mountains are located at the top of the image. Why had no one noticed them before? Most likely one of the reasons is the fact that no spacecraft had ever approached the surface of Io to a record distance of one and a half thousand kilometers. You know what is most surprising and even a little bit scary? The thermal map of Io in the infrared range because it gives an idea of how dangerous the interior of the moons. And that's Jupiter's fault because it's the giant's tidal forces that made Io so restless and unstable. By the way, Juno also captured incredible plumes of volcanic eruptions or geysers rising into the inky sky of the moon. Which object on Io was studied by old man and Juno took over the baton and also immortalized it with her only camera. This is the large volcanic Patera Loki with a diameter of 250 kilometers. The newly arrived probe, in addition to the data, discovered a lake of molten magma in the Patera with amazing snow white islands. Moreover, upon closer examination, it turned out that the solidified areas of the lava lake have a texture similar to obsidian glass. Let's wait until the first shuttles with space tourists fly to Io. Patera Loki promises to become a fashionable resort, so let's buy our tours in advance. Also, Juno failed to uncover one secret. This secret concerns Europa another major moon of Jupiter. It turns out that rumors about its potential habitability may be greatly exaggerated. The automated probe, after collecting data, found that Europa produces a hundred times less oxygen than previously thought. Scientists were sure that the frozen moon generates about a thousand kilograms of oxygen every second. But in reality, it turned out to be only a thousand tons per day. If you add to this the intense radiation coming from Jupiter, the conditions for the emergence of life are not optimistic at all. But why are we only talking about moons? I wonder what about Jupiter itself, the planet for which Juno made this incredible journey? Did the probe send new data about the giant? Of course it did. It's hard to find a more hurricane-like atmosphere among the planets of the solar system. So the updated information mostly concerned Jupiter's atmosphere. First of all, let's admire together the incredible images of the turbulent patterns in the giant's cloud layer. But the most important discovery is Jupiter's South Pole, which Juno was able to observe up close and photograph for the first time. Interestingly, despite the apparent similarity of the massive tornadoes raging in the atmosphere of our gas neighbor, many of the cyclones differ both in appearance and in their characteristics. For example, at the South Pole, there are six permanent cyclones raging, five arranged in a circle and one in the center. According to the probe's measurements, the winds in them blow at a speed of about 360 kilometers per hour. Amazingly, 
all the tornadoes there rotate clockwise. Guess which direction the cyclones at Jupiter's North Pole spin? Absolutely right, counterclockwise. Actually, there are as many as nine tornadoes at the North Pole. What are the sizes of these cyclones? The diameter of one is approximately 4,500 kilometers. It would seem like the situation is stable and there are no surprises to expect. But that's not the case. In the fall of 2019, when Unona flew past Jupiter's South Pole for the 22nd time, it discovered a seventh cyclone that had appeared recently and literally forced its way into the group of veteran tornadoes. There is nothing unshakable in this world, except perhaps for the mighty voice of our gas giant. The cherry on top, which the Unona probe decided to present to the people of Earth on March 7, 2024, during its 59th flyby of Jupiter, an epic photo was taken of the tiny moon Amalthea against the backdrop of a giant storm that has been raging for more than three and a half centuries. It's hard to call this satellite a Jovian moon because the diameter of this celestial body is only 168 kilometers but it is still classified as a moon, even though Amalthea has never achieved a spherical shape due to its tiny size. At the same time, this moon, which is about the size of Liechtenstein, has a unique landscape, mountains, valleys, hills, ravines, and even meteorite craters, of which there are many here. The probe managed to capture Amalthea over Jupiter's northern hemisphere, not far from the equator. It is noteworthy that this moon is one of the reddest objects in the solar system. How much longer will the Juno mission last and what kind of end awaits the automated interplanetary station? The thing is, it was supposed to end back in 2021, but the probe was working so successfully that the mission was extended until 2025. The focus of further research has shifted a bit toward the Galilean moons. Juno is as vigorous as ever, so it would be an unforgivable decision to destroy it right now in Jupiter's deadly atmosphere. By the way, why is such a fate chosen for the probe? After all, an uncontrolled Juno could easily collide with one of the moons orbiting the giant. This is exactly the scenario scientists are afraid of which is why they planned the destruction of the automated station in advance. If it collided with Io, Europa, Ganymede, or another of Jupiter's moons, there would be a risk of contaminating the celestial body with Earth-based biological material, which is highly undesirable for future research. So what are the scientific community's plans for Juno in the future? The spacecraft is expected to orbit Jupiter 44 more times, continuously collecting valuable data. The probe will study the structure of the giant's polar hurricanes, its magnetosphere and radiation belt, and will also get as close as possible to Europa, Ganymede, and the turbulent Io. The closest approach to Europa is planned to be just 320 kilometers from the surface. If there is life there, then from that distance, Juno will be able to see even exotic fish jumping out of the icy cracks. In any case, the spacecraft will accurately measure the thickness of Europa's icy shell and create a detailed map of its surface. Moreover, much of the data obtained has not yet been deciphered, so there is still a lot of work to be done. As you can see, the plans are quite extensive, so we can expect many sensational discoveries and breakthrough soon. If you don't want to miss any stunning news, be sure to follow updates on our channel. We share forecasts in the comments. If you found this video truly useful, don't forget to show it by giving us a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell so you can be among the first to know about new releases. We have many more meetings with different mega super planets ahead of us. And comments 
with the hashtag watching Hubble will appear in the next video. Thank you.